Hey everyone, it's Jenny at JC Cards and I'm super excited to be joining my dear friend Ardith celebrating her 3,000 subscribers on YouTube video hop. Congratulations Ardith. Look at all the wonderful sponsors she's got for this hop. There's prizes to be won at every stop on the hop. I've got all the details in the description box below and you do need to leave a comment on each stop on the hop to be in with a chance to win a prize. These are the two cards I'm going to be showing you how to make today. I'm using Nouveau Glacier Paste or Glacier Paste if you're from England like I am. And uh, I'm going to be using this colour here which is absolutely gorgeous. It's the Quicksilver as well as that blue which is the Frostbite. I'm going to show you two different ways to use this paste. And it's you might be asking well, what's the difference between this and glitter paste and it's all in how it dries. Once it's dried and you'll see it in my examples it looks very similar to um, gold leaf uh, or, or silver leaf as it were. So it's, it flattens out and it looks so shiny it's almost like a mirror, textured mirror, it's gorgeous. So I'm using this stencil, it's by Miss Ink, and all of the supplies I use are linked in the description box below. And I'm using the Quicksilver gla Glacier Paste and smoothing it out with this palette knife all over the stencil, which I've adhered down to my craft mat. This is the Ulta New craft mat. I've mentioned it a couple of times in previous videos, I just love it. And I'm using a purple tape to adhere down my stencil. And then I just lift it up and then I'm gonna set it aside to dry. It dries pretty quickly. I'd say I left it for about an hour, but it was definitely dry well before then. Now, while that's drying, I'm going to use the uh, Frostbite paste. This is a beautiful shimmery metallic blue, and I'm just going to smudge, smush some out onto a piece of cardstock. All the cardstock I'm using today is £110 uh, Nina Solar White because it takes a lot of medium, heavy, wet mediums without warping. And I'm just smearing this out onto this scrap of cardstock. I'm going to be die cutting it with this Hello die by Gillian Vance. And I just want to make sure that I've smushed out enough of it uh, to cover the entire die. So I'm just not looking to get this smooth. I'm looking for some texture. And I'm going to add to it this new embossing powder from WOW, inspired by Catherine Poole. It's from a bundled up trio. And this is the Skylight. And you can see there's huge chunks of gold and holographic material as well as that beautiful kind of bluish greenish teal color and I'm tipping it over the glacier paste and leaving some of it peeping out below. Now you could leave a little bit more but uh, I was looking for a kind of drippy look for my die cut here and then just to speed it up I'm heating it up with my wow dual speed heat gun and look at that it's absolutely stunning in real life I wish you could see what it looks like in real life you should definitely grab some of this just to see it. And then I'm going to die cut this out once it's good and dry using my die cutting machine. And uh, do make sure that everything is completely dry before you do this, otherwise it will stick to your die and your cutting plates, etc. And it should go straight through. I recommend using a metal shim just to add extra pressure and then you can use your pokey tool to pop it out. I've die cut that hello, it's the grande hello I should have mentioned, uh, three more times from white cardstock and then I'm going to adhere them all together using my art glitter glue and then pop the die cut embossed glacier paste piece on top and look at that, it's really 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 sparkly and it doesn't rub off. Super, love this technique, I'll definitely be doing it more in the future. For my background panel, I'm using this Leaf Clusters stamp by Altenew, which is a fab stamp set, so versatile, and I've used it quite a few times recently, and this is the first time I'm using it on video. I'm taking this large leaf stamp, and I'm inking it up with Catherine Pooler ink in Twilight, which is a light grey colour, and I'm just going to stamp that down onto my pile of white cardstock, and I do stamp it twice, because you'll see I missed a couple of areas there. It's just the power of editing, you didn't see me ink it up again. And uh, then you'll see that I get a really good impression. Now I'm also going to come in with some blackjack ink by Catherine Paula, which is a slightly darker, it's, it is grey, it's not quite black, it's kind of between the two. And I've inked up the bottom half of that stamp, I haven't moved it in my misty. And you'll see you get a nice kind of dark to light gradient. 
Now I wanted to add a few more leaves here because I felt like that one branch wasn't enough and I'm just using the printed sheet, the acetate that came with the stamp set just to see what looks good. I'm lining it up and I've gone with this stamp here and I'm going to stamp this in blackjack ink twice and that will make it darker than the leaves that are already on the panel and that way it adds a illusion of perspective and depth so it looks like because it's darker it's closer to you and those that are slightly less dark kind of fade into the background and it's something I've done on a card before and I, I just love doing this it's a great way to add depth without adding dimension and extra layers to your card so I'm doing one more branch this is stamped twice with black jacket ink as well to bring it into the foreground and then what I'll be doing is adding that hello that I created with all of the layers into the center of those leaves, slightly offset to the left. I'm mounting the panel onto some 110 pound Nina Solar White cardstock, and then I'm gonna add my die cut with some art glitter glue, which is my favorite clear adhesive. And I'll just add a acrylic block over the top. This is by Catherine Pooler block love my Catherine Fuller blocks and uh, leave it to dry. Now for a finishing touch I'm going to add some aspen sequins and I'm just picking out the clear and the white sequins because I'm not looking to add any more colour. I think the, the slight blue in that skylight embossing powder and the glacier paste just adds a really nice pop without making it too bright. And I was going to leave it at that, but I had a sub-sentiment lying around that I'd stamped a couple of days ago. It's congrats in Versafine Onyx Black Ink, so I just popped it up on a foam strip. For my second card, I'm using this Take Courage stamp set. It's by Catherine Pooler Designs, and it's got this main ginkgo image, which I just love. I've used this on so many cards, and it's probably one of my favourite stamp sets by Catherine Pooler. And I'm going to ink it up again with Twilight Ink. I'm keeping both of the cards very similar in colour palette. And I actually do use my Misty to stamp this one twice again, just to, to darken the grey a little bit. And then what I'm going to do is die cut it out. There is a coordinating die for this stamp set that will perfectly cut around that ginkgo flower. I'm then going to set that aside and I didn't want to waste that little panel of embossing powder and glacier paste that we used earlier and there was still a little bit of space left on it so I decided to use the whole lot of hearts dies by Heffy Doodle and just cut some of the hearts out from what was left because I just didn't want to waste it and I these are probably the most versatile dies I have in my stash, these heavy doodle hearts, they're absolutely fab. Now my panel has finally dried, this was probably, I think it was like 25 minutes, something like that, and the light, that it, when it catches the light, it almost puts your eye out, it's gorgeous, look at that, super, super pretty, and you see it sort of flattens down. I'm going to add the ginkgo uh, flower popped up on foam squares into the centre of that panel, which I've mounted onto a £110 Nina Solar White card base. And then I'm going to add some square foam tape onto the back of the hearts. And I'm doing double layers so that they're popped up slightly higher than the ginkgo flower. And where it overlaps with that ginkgo flower, I'll just add the one square so that it keeps the heart level. And I popped three or four of those around just to add a little bit of colour and shimmer and shine and not to let that panel that I created go to waste. So we've actually got two different colours of glacier paste on this card. We've got the Quicksilver and the Frostbite. And then I'll add one last heart on the top there. And because it's overhanging, I'm going to just snip it off with my scissors. Now for my sentiment, I'm going to use the Have Courage die by Catherine Pooler, which I have die cut from black cardstock. It's a super intricate die and rather than stacking up four or five times to thicken it up I decided to just directly adhere it onto the center of the ginkgo. I'm using spray adhesive which was the easiest way I thought to add this onto the card and I haven't added any sequins. I've left it like that because it's super shiny as it is and there's a quick look at both the cards and a close-up of that final card. 
That's it. I hope you've enjoyed. Be sure to check in the description box below for the next stop on Ardis 3000 subscriber hop. And be sure to leave comments to be in with a chance to win prizes. You can see all of the details on the hop over on Ardis blog, which I have linked to in the description box below. Thanks very much for watching. Have an awesome day. Bye.